Hello lovelies and welcome to this video. I am so excited that you are here because if you are of childbirth age, you need to watch this video. You need to know the things that I have discovered about childbirth, that you do not have to have pain having a baby naturally at home. And I'm going to share with you my two distinct um, experiences with my first daughter and my second and how they were completely different experiences um, simply because of one simple fact. So stay tuned for the rest of the video. You're going to want to hear everything that I have to say. All right, so where do I start? I've already tried to film this like three times and I keep getting bogged down with the details. And I, I know I wanted to make it interesting, so I'm gonna start over. Um, this is my third attempt, but we're gonna get it. We're gonna get through it. Um, so let's just start in with my story. So when I had Bethany, I was a new mom at, I think I had her at 27 years old. Um, and it was scary. I was terrified to give birth. You know um, just like any other young woman is when they have their first baby and it can be like you know you you see movies you see like maybe you've seen a birth video on YouTube if you're if you're like me and you were interested in that kind of stuff um, hold on let me turn my phone off because it is buzzing a lot and it's driving me crazy okay we're good I'm gonna try to talk a little bit quieter because my girls are napping so I had seen you know like the typical thing that you're supposed to experience a lot of pain and a lot of discomfort in childbirth so i was terrified well my midwife gave me a book called supernatural childbirth by jackie mize and that book totally transformed my mindset on birth and the process of bringing a baby into the world and how it doesn't have to be toilsome and it actually doesn't have to be painful i was shocked because obviously i'm a christian um, in the bible it talks about how women will have a lot of pain in childbirth and it's true it is very painful to have a baby if you don't apply faith to the situation that you're in when you're giving birth um, and it really starts before that it all starts with your mindset and so i read through this book and i found this thing that i didn't know was that there is a verse in the in the in the new testament that says that women are going to be saved in childbirth or saved through childbirth it's in amos it's um if you want to know what it is it's Amos 3.3. 3. And um, when I read that, I was so shocked because I had never ever heard that in my entire Christian life. I was 27 years old. I grew up as a missionary. Um, I had parents who had studied in the ministry and I had never heard that you did not have to suffer as a woman bringing babies into the world. And it rocked me completely. And I was like, well, okay, this woman experienced this in the book, the author. Um, how many other women are experiencing this? So I did a Google, I did a, a, a YouTube search and one other person came up and she had experienced it. And I was like, okay, well, if she experienced it and the author experienced it, it must be true because they're applying the things that they learned um, in having faith that they could have babies without pain. So I was like, okay, well, if they experienced it, I can experience it too. Now, one thing that I did is that I made the mistake during my pregnancy with Bethany of telling a lot of people this newfound thing that I had heard because I was like astounded. I was astonished that, um, you know, it didn't have to hurt. And I was like, well, if I'm going to be going into labor and it's not going to hurt and I'm a first time mom, how am I going to know when the baby's coming? Because it's not going to hurt. And I even asked my midwife that and she was like, oh, it's going to hurt. And I was like, but you gave me that book. <laughs> And I'm not bashing her whatsoever because I love her so much. She's a dear friend of mine now. Um, but it, it was really confusing to me. And so anyways, I continued to tell more people about this newfound discovery. And a lot of women that I told were very, very taken aback by what I was saying. And they were like, just so you know, just because you have a natural birth um, doesn't mean that you get a badge for that. And I was... It was, it was like, it was a big put down, you know? And now if you didn't have, if you're watching this and you didn't have the birth that you desired, please know that this is not me showing off. This is, I'm, I'm sharing this because I want you to know that there is a different way. Like if you want to have more kids, it doesn't have to be the way that it was um, for your first or your second or your third, however it went. Even if you had to have an emergency C-section, it doesn't have to be that way the next time. So, 
um, I was confused, you know, that all these people didn't even seem to be happy for me and they weren't even rooting me on. So I learned a really valuable lesson that when you're believing for something, you don't have to tell everybody. You can be quiet about the things that you're believing for and it actually helps you to strengthen your faith because if you have other people that you're telling about something that you're standing on and agreeing with the Lord for or with your husband for and you begin to bring more people into it, their doubts are going to start to mess with your mindset and really cause you to start doubting the things that you said you believed. And so that's what started happening to me. And I was like, I really started doubting the ability, um, my ability to have a baby naturally um, at home without pain and without taking any kind of medication for it and, or, you know, getting an epidural. So it was, you know, it was a little bit discouraging that I didn't find anybody who encouraged me. And that is the reason that I'm making this video because I, if you believe, if you read this book and you believe that you can have a baby without pain, I 100% stand with you in agreement that you will because I experienced it in my second birth. So my first birth comes around, um, I go into labor and it was in and out of labor, in and out of labor for like a week. And I was exhausted because my labor would start and I didn't feel ready to be a mom. And that fear of not feeling ready um, really caused a lot of discomfort. And it also kept my labor from advancing. Um, I would go into labor when Roberto was home in the morning and when he would go to work, it would stop. And it would stop until that night and then it would start back up when he came home. Because there's this thing about our bodies as women that is absolutely amazing. That we usually won't go into labor unless your body feels completely comfortable in the situation that you're in. That's why a lot of babies are born at night or labor starts at night because you're completely calm. And um, with me, my I, I, it wouldn't start until my husband was home. <laughs> and so... Um, I remember just feeling completely exhausted because I wasn't getting enough rest. Well, um, I think it was like Thursday or something, my midwife came and she was like, you are already like, I think it was like three centimeters dilated and you're already getting effaced. I can't even remember the numbers anymore. But uh, she was like, you're, you're, he's, she's like, I'm not leaving town. You're gonna have the baby probably tonight or tomorrow. You're probably gonna go into labor. Um, so I felt a little crampy and stuff, nothing too serious, and I was really excited because I was like, okay, well, she's finally going to come, you know. Um, and then contractions started picking up a little bit that night, and then they fizzled out completely, and she was there with her birth team, and I was nervous because everybody was there, and I felt like I had to perform, like I had to go into labor fully to have this baby. And, um, I, it just wasn't happening, and so I kind of fell asleep, and she was like, okay, well... We're gonna leave, we're gonna let you rest all day today, and that was Saturday um, at this, or sorry, Friday at this point. Um, she's like, we're gonna let you rest and we'll come back when your contractions pick up, just let us know, we'll be in town. So I spent all day resting, we ate a good meal, contractions kind of started picking up in the evening, we were watching a movie, it was really enjoyable, and uh, then we had my um, doula come and she came for a little bit and I was like, she was like, why don't we take a walk? You know, as so I took a walk and the contractions actually stopped during the walk. And I was like, well, maybe this isn't it, but they were not painful. And my water hadn't broken or anything like that. It's actually pretty rare for your water to break before you have your first child, um, you know, before you actually go into transition. And so anyways, she was like, okay, well, just relax. You know, it's not a big deal. The baby will come when the baby's ready. And then about an hour into it, um, things really started progressing. And I started having a little bit more contractions, a little bit more discomfort. And then my doula said, okay, it's time to call the midwife. Um, you know, she's actually getting to the point. I was getting to the point where I couldn't talk through the contractions anymore. And so my midwife came back with the birth team and again it fizzled out because i was stressed that i had to perform for them and i didn't want the contractions to hurt either and i was scared that she was going to tell me yeah they have to hurt or you're not ready to have a baby and so um anyways she checked me and she was like okay so there's this issue and with bethany when she was coming down um into the birth canal there's this sack that the baby is inside of if you 
don't know um, what I'm talking about, I'm just going to explain it a little bit. If you do know, it's okay. I'll explain it for you too. So there's this sack that the baby is in and it, I can't remember what it's called. Um, the amniotic sac, I think is what it's called. Yeah, the amniotic sac. And so it is filled with fluid. It's called amniotic fluid. And when your, water, when your water breaks, that's the fluid that comes out, right? So when your waters break naturally, most of the time, not all of the water um, or the fluid is lost. Um, and so it still acts as a cushion. So the, when you have a contraction, your belly pushes down on itself and kind of like around to get the baby to move down. And with Bethany, her head had not gotten into the right spot that it needed to be in. And I had, I actually had, I found out later, I had um, my pelvis was off centered. So one side was raised like half of a centimeter or something. And that was like, I found that out like six months down the line. But anyways, because my pelvis was out of alignment, which, you know, I didn't know because I didn't have a great chiropractor when I, I didn't have one specialized in, in birth. Um, when I had Bethany. I was going to one, but she, she could never get my pelvis to feel right. And I knew that something was off because it was super uncomfortable and it turned into um, pubic symphysis dys dysfunction, which I didn't even know what that was at the time, but it was so uncomfortable. And um, so anyways, my, my pelvis was out of alignment and when Bethany was coming down the um, birth canal, her head kind of got this bulge in the water there was a bulge in the bag and then her head was on top anyways that caused a lot of issues because when a baby is being born their head is supposed to make direct contact with the um, cervix to cause the cervix to dilate and to open which is to open and then the baby's born but her head was tilted and it was coming down on an angle and there was a bulge in the water so my midwife was like okay i have to break your water and I was like, I don't really want to do that, but I didn't know. I, I honestly didn't know what would happen if she broke, if she broke my waters. She just told me the baby would be born, you know, and would have to be born within 24 hours. I was like, okay, let's just do it. I just want her to be born already. I don't want to keep waiting because I'm already tired. And she agreed, and um, and that was the best option in that in that moment. If I could go back and do it again, I would see if there was anything else that could, could have possibly been done because the water is what causes there to be a cushion between the baby and uh, your body, your your uterus and your um, abs and everything. And so um, from that point forward, every contraction was super, super excruciatingly painful and they just got worse and worse and worse as time went on. However. There was a redemption in my story with Bethany in that my labor was only six hours long of active labor. Obviously I was in early labor for like two days, but active labor where it was like almost unbearable was only six hours. And that is really, really, really short for a first time mom. So I was super grateful for that. Um, but it was hard, it was super hard. Um, it was toilsome, it was, uh, I didn't sleep all night and obviously when you're having a baby you can't normally you can't sleep um, and it was the hardest thing that I have ever done in my entire life it was so hard um, I can't even if you've never had a baby I can't even explain it but yeah it was not fun <laughs> um, one thing was that I wanted to have a home uh, a home birth and a water birth with Bethany and because she um, what was the reasoning oh not because she broke my water but because Bethany was like tilted I had to have my leg raised in a certain position for her to for my cervix to dilate the correct way because there was a like a lip over her head and it couldn't like break past it and so because of that i had to lay on the bed unmoving for like two hours one hour in one position one hour in the other and i couldn't move and that makes things so much more unbearable because you can't like distract yourself with anything you just have to lay perfectly still and so yeah that was really hard um but i had a whole lot of doubt in my mind that i wouldn't be able to do it and because of that that is what made it so hard i have a little guest this is Adeline. She's one and she has ketchup on her forehead <laughs> from breakfast. Um, she just woke up from her nap. So I'm going to see how much she'll let me film right now um, because 
I really want to try to get this um, completely filmed. But um, so that was basically the first part of the story it was Bethany's story. Now I'm going to talk about Adeline's story. And actually this picture right here is her inside my womb um, before she was born. I think it was like at 20 or no, 32 weeks, I'm pretty sure, like a month before she was born. And um, she looks so much like herself. I mean, obviously, you know, but like before she was born, that's what she looked like. And it's so cute. So anyways, um, what was I saying? So yeah, so that was my first birth experience. And it was hard. It was really hard. But I did not give up the hope that I would experience a birth without pain at home, naturally, without medication. And so... One of the things, um, before I get into the second part of the story, that I want to preface is that when I first got pregnant with Bethany, um, Roberto and I were not on the same page. I wanted to have a home birth for as long as I can remember. Like, ever since I started thinking about having a family, I wanted to have a home birth. And um, I just, you know, I had a... A completely different mindset than Roberto. Roberto wanted me to go to the hospital and have birth like every other woman he's ever known and what changed his mind was I made him watch a documentary called The Business of Being Born and that documentary is absolutely phenomenal. It is controversial. If you love controversy you should watch it. <laughs> um, but that's all I'm going to say about that but it basically explains a lot of things that happen in hospitals now, I'm not saying that hospitals are bad, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a baby in a hospital. That is your decision to make, along with your partner, your midwife, your doctor, your husband. Personally, I would never have a baby in a hospital unless I absolutely had to. It is really important for you and your partner to be on the same page as far as birth goes. If you're not in agreement, um, you should not have a home birth because it's really important to have the full support of your partner, of your husband, when you're having a baby. So that's the premise of that. When you're having a baby, um, fear causes tension in your body. I'm sure you know this, but it's kind of hard to like, I guess, really recognize it. So if you're scared, you get like super tense, you know, and you get um, agitated and uh, just uncomfortable. Um, if you're scared about something, if it's any, it could be anything, absolutely anything causes tension when it causes fear. And when you, when you tense a muscle super, super, super tight, and then you try to flex that muscle like your arm, after a while, your arm is gonna start to hurt super bad because you're making all of this extra effort for your muscle to overcome the tenseness of, of your bicep or of your tricep. And um, that just causes a lot of discomfort. It is the same exact thing for your uterus. Your uterus is a muscle. And so if you're tense and you're scared, you're scared and you're tense and you have fear about giving birth, it's going to hurt. There is no doubt about that that is going to hurt. Um, but if you have no fear, you have no tension and therefore you have no pain. So right before I had Adeline, there was a um, man in our church who was actually, um, I don't remember if he was... He, he was like like we were just barely acquainted with him and he had recently started coming to our church with his family but he used to be a chiropractor and he gave me um a book called uh unassisted childbirth and now i do not recommend having an unassisted childbirth but uh he gave me the book he's like hey you should read this and i was like okay so i read the book and it was these stories about these women who knew what to do instinctively when they were giving birth to their babies um, and they weren't afraid there wasn't a lot of pressure on them to perform and they have their babies very quickly and very effortlessly and I was like wow that's inspiring you know like they didn't even have a midwife there you know it was just them and their husbands and sometimes it was just them alone and a lot of women used to have babies like that um, it was actually the norm to have babies at home before the 1900s and midwives started to be viewed as really bad people um, or unclean people 
are not sanitary. And now granted, there's probably some truth to that somewhere, but it was mainly because of the institution of hospitals. Okay, well, I lost my train of thought and I tried to like go back in the footage to figure out what I was saying and I can't figure out how to work that part of my camera because I just got it and yeah, so I'm just going to go with the flow and continue with the story and hopefully it makes sense later when I edit this. Um, so anyways, with Adeline, completely, completely different experience. I was reading this book um, by my um, acquaintance friend from church and I was like, wow, this is absolutely inspiring. Um, and this is the other thing that I was distinctly different this time around when I had a baby was that I didn't tell absolutely anybody what I was believing for. I was believing for 100% pain-free childbirth, unmedicated at home, natural childbirth. Um, and that was that. And I was believing for a very, very fast labor and delivery. And that's what I got pretty much. So when... Um, I'm going to go into the story of how Adeline was born now and um, the, the distinct difference that it was. So my labor with Adeline, um, <laughs> it was so funny. Like right before I had her, we decided to um, basically turn an office in the back of our house into our master bedroom. So we had that whole project going like three months before she was born and then uh, found out that there was a leak under our kitchen where a pipe was not even connected to the sewage and we had our whole floor torn out in the kitchen. And so this whole, and, and not only that, we had refinished our floors and those needed to be done as well before she was born. And I was like, baby, you are not coming. You are not gonna be born until everything is done. And we were doing, we were um, putting in a master bathroom in the back as well. And I really, really was, I was adamant that I was gonna have a water birth this time around. So, um, that I wanted the bathroom finished as well, just to have that for like right after having a baby, it's nice to have a bathroom nearby. And so anyways, she wasn't born until the night after um, our, I think our floors had been closed up the, the night before and they weren't refinished or anything in the kitchen. It was just boards like laid out so that, you know, we wouldn't fall through to the dirt floor underneath. <laughs> Um, but the the leak had been fixed and everything so I go into labor, right? I'm texting my midwife I'm telling her, you know, what's going on. She's like, okay, how about you get in the bath? Relax, make sure that you are really chill and let me know if the if the um, if they pick up or if they stop the contractions So I take a bath they kind of taper off a little bit, but not a whole lot and they were like less than five minutes apart but they had been at like two minutes apart. And um, so I was like, well, I don't know if it's gonna start, like keep going or not. And she's like, okay, why don't you try to get some rest, but text me if anything changes. So I was like, okay. So I get out of the bathtub and I, um, oh, and I also had dropped my phone in the bathtub and I it had scared me so bad that the contractions stopped because I thought that it, my phone was gonna die. It's a funny story, but nothing happened. Um, my phone was fine because I was timing the contractions. And so I go to bed around, I don't remember if I went to bed after 12.30, I think I went to bed at like one. And, because contractions started at 12.30. Went to bed around one after taking a bath, or 1.30, and I slept through my contractions because they didn't stop. Um, and I remember getting like progressively more uncomfortable, but I would keep falling asleep in between the contractions. And so then around like, I don't remember what time it was. I think it was like at 6 a.m. Um, or 5 a.m. I woke up, no, I think I woke up at six. Did I wake up at six? I think I woke up at like 5.30 or quarter to six and I really had to go to the bathroom like super bad. And so I ran, um, from the back room, which our, our bedroom is over here and the bathroom is right here. And so I basically had to run across the entire house because the <laughs> our, our bathroom next to our bedroom was not finished. So I run to the bathroom and I didn't take my phone because I really had to go. And so I go to the bathroom um, and basically, before you have a baby, um, it's kind of, this is kind of TMI, but your bowels, your intestines completely empty out. And so I had a massive stomach ache and I'm like, man, 
I'm like, I don't want to be sick right now, you know, kind of thing. I was like, why do I have such a bad stomach ache? And I just sat on the toilet for what I thought was like 10 minutes, maybe half an hour at most. Here you go. There's your book. And no, I was in there for over an hour. So by the time that I finally was like, oh my gosh, because I kept trying to get up and I kept having these stomach cramps and they didn't hurt like contractions at all but they were like waves and then they would stop and subside and they would come again and I'd be like, oh my gosh, my stomach hurts so bad. But like, like in the sense of, I thought I just had a really bad diarrhea. <laughs> and, but I, I wasn't really going to the bathroom anymore. And I had been in there for a long time and I didn't have my phone. So I couldn't even call for Roberto. And the other thing was Bethany was sleeping in her room and I did not want to wake her up because I was like, I have to be quiet because of, you know, I don't want to wake up and have to deal with her um, being awake and cranky in the middle of the night or the middle of the morning or early morning. And so I was trying to be really quiet. Well, then I was like, it dawned on me. I was like, I am in labor. And I was like, these don't hurt. I was like, that is crazy. Like, you know, but I had been believe believing for that. So at like 6-ish AM, maybe a little bit past that, I think it was like 6.30, I ran to the back, like in between contractions. I was like, okay, I have to get the timing of this right because I'm not gonna be able to run or go anywhere once, um, once this contraction keeps going. Hold on, let me get her situated. Okay, I'm gonna try to speed this up a little bit because she's getting kind of antsy and she doesn't want to be put down, but she doesn't want me to be talking either. <laughs> Can you go play with your toys? Go play with your toys. I don't know what it is about filming that kids get so antsy when you're sitting down talking for a long period of time. So I tried to time my contraction, like the end of the contraction, I just like sprinted out of the bathroom to go get Roberto and I like fell on the bed and then one started again and I was like, you have to call the midwife, baby's coming and it was so dramatic, it was like such a movie scene and he was like completely dead asleep and hey baby, what is it? It was such a like a movie scene, you know, like all dramatic coming into the room, waking up the husband <laughs> and he was like super confused. He's like, are you sure this is it? I'm like, yes, she is going to be born like soon, like this morning. And he was like, okay. So he grabs his phone and he couldn't even remember his name. And it was so hilarious. Like looking back at it, <laughs> he was like, oh yeah. He's like, this is, uh, is, is this Roberto or something? I can't even remember. He forgot his name. And um, I can't remember what he said, but it was so funny. And so my midwife um, lives out of state and she's just like right over the border. And she was over at her house and she wasn't in town this time. And so she had to drive quite a bit to get here. But normally that wouldn't be a big deal. You know, most babies are not born in under two hours. Um, and she has a plenty of time to get here, like when it's, you know, two hours, but, uh, it wasn't like, because I didn't take my phone with me to the bathroom, we didn't notify her soon enough. And so she tells Roberto, okay, start filling up the birthing tub. Um, cause we had like a birthing pool and he needed to fill it with air and then put the liner in and then fill it with water. So I'm like pacing in the bedroom and the contractions have not stopped. They've gotten more intense, um, intense, but not painful. And I just kept like doubling over the bed every time I would have one because it felt like a stomach ache. And um, Roberto was like, okay, why don't you like go get in the bathtub, turn on the warm water and just try to calm down um, and I'm gonna get everything ready. Well, he was like frantic, completely like, like <laughs> he was, I don't even know what he was doing, but I remember being in the bathtub, um, filling it up with water and he was like running in the whole house and he was supposed to be getting, uh, the, the tub filled with water and he couldn't figure out how to attach the hose to the spigot. 
and it was a new spigot too like we had specifically put in a new spigot so it would be easy to connect the hose and he could not figure out how to turn how to like connect the hose and he couldn't find anything i had put all of my birthing stuff into like two different boxes and he like literally just completely i don't know dumped everything out and couldn't find the liner for the tub and it was like in a very clear labeled thing and so he like put the shower liner in he put a shower liner in the tub which didn't even do anything but so he was in the process of filling it with air and then he like i just was progressively like i guess you could call it like making noise or like moaning or groaning through the contractions and i was getting worried that he wasn't going to see the baby get born because i was getting to the point where i reached down and i felt my bag of water and I had another contraction and I pushed and it broke like it burst like it felt like a balloon popping under my under my fingers I was like oh my gosh and so I called Roberto and I was like my water broke and he's like are you sure and I'm like yes and so at that point he was complete like a mess and my midwife was trying to get here as fast as she could and it had been about 40 minutes at this point and so I was like okay well this is it and I was like Jesus you're here with me right now and i know you're going to protect me and everything's going to be okay and i know that like i can do all things through christ who strengthens me and that's what i remember saying because it was intense but it wasn't super painful um it's really hard to describe it's like you're doing really hard work and your muscles are working really hard and so you get really tired and um that's what's hard about it like when you have a pain-free childbirth and I will say, when my contractions first picked up and I got in the bathtub, Roberto, would, obviously he was running around frantic trying to find things, and I don't know what else he was doing. He was just like pacing the whole house. But Bethany was sleeping through all of this, and this was, at this point it was like seven something. And he came in, probably around 7.30, when he was still trying to mess with the, the birthing tub, and he was like, okay, try to remember the things that you read in that book uh the supernatural childbirth book and like in between contractions i was even able to have a conversation like it wasn't at all how it was with bethany and there was complete peace in between it was amazing um because with her they just came so fast and so close together that i literally had no break and i couldn't even think you know straight i was it was to the point with bethany where i was like hallucinating in between contractions and having like memories come up in my mind that I didn't even remember. It was the weirdest experience. But uh, with Adeline, it wasn't that at all. It was just peaceful and it was a joyful experience, even though it was, it was a lot of hard work. And so I just kept feeling this urge to push. So I was pushing along with the contractions. And when he came in here, when Roberto came in and said, try to remember the things that you read in that book, I was like, okay, yes. And I already had it so ingrained in my brain and in my heart that I was going to have a pain-free childbirth that when he said that, it prompted me to hold on to that even more, that it was going to be painless. And when I really had my mind wrapped around it that it wasn't going to hurt, the contractions didn't hurt at all. When I started to lose, fact, lose grasp of that and kind of slip a little bit in the mindset, they started to hurt a little bit. And then with the next one, I'd be like, no, I'm standing on that promise. And they stopped hurting almost completely. Um, so there was a little bit of pain, but it was like every other contraction when I wasn't really having my mind in the right place. So at the point that I started pushing, there was absolutely no more pain at all. Um, Cause I was at that, you know, the point of, I was past the point of transition at that point. And so anyways, I pushed a little bit too much and sh um, I did tear a little bit, but, um, or I tore a lot, <laughs> but uh, it was just such a different experience. And she was born, I caught her. Um, Roberto finally came in, stayed in the bathroom for like the last few pushes and he, s he saw her head crowning right when he came in. And so I was like, okay, I can do this. You know, like I got this, Jesus, you've got me. Like you're holding me in the palm of your hands. Nothing bad is gonna happen to me. Nothing bad is gonna happen to my baby. And she was born in our bathtub. And I'll insert a few clips of like where she was born and everything and some pictures throughout this video. I mean, probably have already seen some if I put them on the screen. But it was the most amazing experience just to like be able to catch your own baby and 
I grabbed her shoulders and Roberto grabbed her bottom and her feet and we just lifted her up and she was still like she had her little cord still and she was so tiny she was a little tiny thing um <laughs> But it was just, it was so surreal and it was absolutely supernatural. And I've been talking for a long time and hopefully this is not like super, super, super long. But that is how you can have a supernatural childbirth. And I didn't give points because I really wanted to tell my story and how it was different both times. And I really suggest that if you really, really want to have, have a similar childbirth like I did, that you watch The Business of Being Born and that you read Supernatural Childbirth. I would say read Supernatural Childbirth before you watch The Business of Being Born. Um, and it's, it's really about your mindset. It's about not having fear. And if you can control not having fear and not being anxious, and you can believe for simple things like not having a headache, it's, it's easy. It is so easy to have kids. And, um, I mean, easy in the sense that it's not painful. <laughs> it's still a lot of work. It's a lot of work on your body. Um, but the experience between Bethany and the experience between Adeline's birth was so dramatically different that I can attest to the fact that it is completely possible to have children without pain a natural childbirth. So that is my story. Yeah, and I know that I might get a little bit of hate for this, but I don't care because I'm just being obedient to what God told me to do, what he told me to say. I prayed that he would speak to you through this video. If you're wanting to have a natural childbirth, that you will get that and you will be able to stand and believe for that. So I'm gonna stop it here because I think that my video is already really, really long and Addie's throwing Cheerios on the floor. <laughs> so this was my, this was my supernatural birth right here, this one right here. And the other one was just as awesome, but it was different. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this kind of content, stick around. I do a lot of motherhood content and things to do with the home and interior design. But I gotta go. Thanks for watching you guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're inspired and motivated and that you get the birth that you desire. So. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye. Say bye. Can you wave? Can you wave bye bye? I just finished filming the video and I realized that I had asked some questions on, I had asked my followers on Instagram to ask me questions about birth and I forgot to directly address them, but I did answer them in the video without stating that it was a question um unintentionally so the first one was how do you cancel out negative thoughts and the main thing is you just believe like you have to stop yourself in the moment like i was in the bathtub when roberto came in and prompted me to remember that helped me to cancel out negative thoughts then the next thing was did you give birth without um, pain and yes i did give birth without pain there was a little bit of discomfort at the beginning a little tiny bit of pain but towards the end of labor yes it was without pain so yeah i hope that you guys enjoyed and i will see you in the next video bye